Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends. Thank you for joining us one more time in MS Creative Us and our devotional for this Monday morning is Five Steps of Growing Your Establishment. We want to look at First Chronicles. We are still at chapter 12. We begin at verse 16 and work our way to verse 22. The Bible provides as follows. Other Benjamites and men from Judah also went to David at the stronghold. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come in peace to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies, even though my hands have done no wrong, may the God of our ancestors look on it and judge. Then the spirit took control of Amasai, chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are with you, son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you and peace to him who helps, for your God helps you. So David received them and made them leaders of his troops. Verse 22. At that time, man came day after day, to help David until there was a great army like an army of God. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name as we start this week. How we pray, dear Father, that our work may grow, our companies may grow, and we want to look at these issues that you have set for us in your word. For they have been written for us as an example. I pray, dear Lord, that you may prosper us in our individual spaces. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My friends, uh, without much ado, we raise our usual five points. Many of us may be entrepreneurs. We may be working in uh, multinational corporations. In, in, in established corporations, wherever we may be, we may want to grow our enterprise day by day. We want to see clients come in through our doors day in and day out. And how does the Bible suggest we go about this? Let us look at the example of David as he interacts with men from Benjamin and Judah. At point number one, we want to meet them halfway. As David hears that men have come to his stronghold, he does not remain seated until they get to where he is. He goes out to meet them halfway. That's what the Bible says. It says David went out to meet them. Now, the fact that they are coming to offer their skills does not warrant to have them being treated like trash. And the fact that they have come to shop at your enterprise does not mean the clients do not have any other place to go to. Let them see the value of coming to you when you meet them halfway. Make it your business that even when you are in your office, when a client comes to your door, stand up and meet them halfway. It does not mean they are desperate, even though they may be desperate, but still stand up and meet them halfway. I mean, literally, get off your seat. That's what you're paid to do. And at point number two, I also love the way David acknowledges that he needs help. You, you need to start by acknowledging that you need help. A acknowledge that you are grateful the clients have come to you. Acknowledge that someone has sought to partner with you. They have taken time to, uh, to, to, to recognize that you are someone who can contribute. The, the, the Bible goes on to say, If you have come in peace to help me, my heart will be united with you. Many of us, we are quick to make pledges, but we don't appreciate and acknowledge that we need help. Acknowledge that you need help. You need people to come to your door. When they do come through and say, let us do business together, you want to say, thank you for taking time to come through. Thank you for taking time to give me this opportunity to work with you and partner with you. Thereafter, go on to the pledge. You know, we are so quick to say, we'll do this will deliver, we're worth so much, we, we, we are the best in, in, in the industry. But before you do that, acknowledge, acknowledge. It will make people think about coming back and even referring people to your corner. And at point number three, 
you also want to look at this. You want to be someone who is beyond reproach. As David talks to them, he says, my hands have done no wrong. If you are going to do me any harm, take not, I am innocent. Take not, I am a man of my word. Take not, my record speaks for itself. And uh, this reminds me of uh, two other scenarios. Uh, I'm reminded of Moses as he has been challenged by Dathan and Korah. He says, how dare these people treat me this way? I have not even taken their donkey. Not even their donkey. What is their basis of even coming to treat me as they have done? Some of us are treated in a nasty way because we deserve it. We are treated, treated in a way that is not so kind because we have earned it. We have earned it. Now, people are walking away from our enterprises because our attitude towards them stinks. We have earned it. We have earned it. But Moses says, I have done good by these people. What basis do they have to come and challenge me in this way? I'm also reminded of Samuel as he says, is there anyone amongst you whose donkey I've taken? Is there anyone whose oxen I have taken? Why have you done such a thing to me? Let your record speak for itself. Be above reproach. Be above reproach. And at point number four, you also want to notice something about David. He, he doesn't say, I'm a man who has taken on Goliath. He is no more. He should you dare cross my path, I will deal with you. But he says, God of our ancestors, may he look upon this issue and judge. You know, I, I love the way he, he, he turns towards God. He, he can handle himself. He can pull his own weight, but he still turns towards God. You know, many a time we want to speak from our experiences, but we could grow our enterprises when people know that we are God-fearing. In conduct and in speech, we look to God for fairness. We look to God as the standard. We look to God as the uh, paradigm of justice. God is the one who determines what ought to be done. As we go through our businesses, when people know this and see it, they shall take us for what we are worth. And at point number five, the man of Judah and the man of Benjamin have come through. And David now looks at their merit. We have already looked at this and we said, when you look at the Gibeonites, you want to recognize people for who they are, not for where they come from. When you look at those who are Kohathites, recognize them for the skill they bring on board. Now, as David looks at what these men bring on board, he made them leaders over his troops based on merit. What are the five things that you may want to consider as you grow your enterprise? At point number one, you want to meet those who come halfway. Meet them halfway. And at point number two, acknowledge that you need help. Number three, may your conduct and speech be above reproach. Number four, be God-fearing, both in your conduct and in your speech. And at point number five, recognize merit and deal with people as such. My good friends, as you go about your daily business, I do not know what enterprise you're in, but the good Lord sees you and he wants to prosper you. Consider these five recommendations that I've given unto you. And above all, I recommend that you spend time in prayer. Let us pray as the Lord blesses us. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of hearing you speak to us. As we go about our business for today, may you go ahead of us. May you open opportunities for us. Should there be any harm that will come our way, may you shut those doors. For we know that where you have shut, no man can, can, can open. And where you have opened, no man can close. I pray, dear Lord, that when you have blessed us, we may return all the glory and the praise unto you on high. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen.